Hello. Hello, I'm back. I'm just going to tell the chat. Okay, we're back on. Hit F5. Mmm. Yeah, it worked, didn't it? Okay, so, um... <clears throat> So the reason I've brought you all here today is that um, I noticed that um, oh, recently I've been doing a lot of hard work, but it's been on things that you haven't always been able to see. Um, so, for example, I did. A, well, I mean, it took me ages to make the Doctor Who song. You did see that in the end. There's another song um, which is going to be on my Patreon really soon. Um, you know, when the new month rolls around, which is tomorrow, although it won't be on there tomorrow because you know, I'm not quite finished, but it'll be, it'll be, you know, this month or next month, whatever you want to call it. Um, <clears throat> I've been writing my novel, I've been working on my comic, there's various things I've been doing, and that has distracted me to the extent that I haven't been doing very much, like, normal things, uh, and streaming is one of the things I haven't been doing. And so I'm just, I'm just delaying, I'm just stalling for time while people get through the adverts or whatever it is that people will have to get through. Um... And um, I uh, <clears throat> there's there's things that I wanted to do this month because it was October and like October started and I thought oh it's October and I've always been quite fond of October you know and October started and and it carried on and I was like I'm going to do the October thing and then it went away you know and we're all the way through October and I can't believe I've not done my October thing. So, I'm going to do my October thing. Um, let me just make sure that this is streaming properly. Let me go on the, the Twitch app and just check. Just check that I'm on. I think I might be on, yeah. Yeah, I think I might be on. And, oh yeah, that'd be good actually. I do want to do that, yeah. But before that, I have an October tradition and I haven't done it this year yet and so now I'm going to do it with you um, let me just put in the put in the old chat that uh, come by if you're here No, not come by if you're the pop star dude. The pop star dude is welcome. I'm trying to put at here. CTP. Twitch.tv. Demon Tomato Dave. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can, Siege. Of course you can. That's right. I've only got one and three quarter hours of October left. And I'm, I'm not going to spend much of it doing my October thing, but it's time for my October thing. My tradition. ba, -ba. Yeah! Hey, check it out! It's Sonic 3D! Whoa! Yeah! I've not played this in a year, you guys! Because it is the thing I do in October! Remember the controls to Sonic 3D! Oh, obviously I can't go that way. Oh dear, now I'm stuck! Oh dear! Hey! Woo! Hooray! Yay! No, it doesn't compound, it's great! I love it! Doodly doo, doodly doo! Hi, Compound Killer One! What's been so long? Us seeing each other or me playing this game, Sonic 3D? <laughs> Um, Cairo, no, it's just because, um, it came out, it must have come out in October, or thereabouts, and, um, it was the first Mega Drive game, and therefore probably the first console game, I bought with my own pocket money, you know, instead of, like, getting it for my birthday or Christmas or something, um, and, oh, it's a bit juddery, actually, I wonder if I can fix that, ba ba, and just as a result, I've always associated, like, when the cold weather comes by and when it's October, I always have associated it with this game and, weirdly, uh, with the uh, the soundtrack to Starlight Express. Because um, I was listening to both that and... No, I was just listening to that 
and playing this. But the music to this, I've always uh, held dear. I, I think it's one of the better... Oh, hang on. Sorry, I, the, it was probably on too loud, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just one of the better uh, Mega Drive soundtracks there is. And I think that is enough. I think that can really influence me. If the music in something is good, I'll like the thing, you know? Now, oh, what's the button? There we go. Wee Peng! Oh no! Um, now, about this time last year, the guy who made this game, or like who was in charge of it in some way, um, started posting um, interesting things on YouTube and uh, eventually released a, a sort of a director's cut version of the game. Um, do I want to play that? I can't decide because this is the game I love, you know? So. I don't know. I feel as if there are some director's cut decisions that I seem to remember thinking I'd rather not have in the game. Um, and that I preferred it the way it originally was. No, I just... I can't... There's no point in explaining it. I just love this... I love this game. It's not... I'm not being ironic. I'm not being difficult. I just think it's good. Um, well, no. Is that true? I don't know. I don't know if I think it's good, but... The child me... And when I say child, I mean, I was 14. So, you know, not very child. Although, for me, 14 was the equivalent of about 8... Um, hey, Tails, how are you? I've got some rings if you want them. Chuk-chuk-ding! Yeah, I did, didn't I? Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
But also, it's a toy shop that I knew very well, just from normal life. And the two memories don't link up. Like, I guess, oh, I know why. It's because in my normal memories, in my normal knowledge, I always approach the shop from one direction. Whereas in this memory, we approach it from a different direction because we were walking from his house rather than coming in by car with my mum. Um... Ah! I need to remember the, the flipping button and remember, remember it. Like, keep it remembered. There we go. Oh, yeah, give me that. And we went to this toy shop. And they had, at the toy shop, like, two Sonic toys. And this was the first time I'd ever seen Sonic toys, ever. Apart from, like, the, the plush, the Sonic... Well, we didn't call them plushes in those days. The, the Sonic Teddy, we called it. Um, and, um... Everybody had that, but... This was the first time I'd seen plastic Sonic toys. Ah. And there was two of them. One, I think, was like a pull-back-and-go type toy. And then the other one was... I wasn't quite sure what it was, but it said, like, Arena Battle. And listen, I just happened to have enough money to buy it. So I bought it. And we took it back to his house and we played with it. And it was just such a great afternoon that we had with this lovely little toy. And all it was... The, the, this was a repackaging of something that already existed, so some of you might know it in another format. But you had a little... Uh, the box that they came in kind of looked like a little wrestling ring. And if you opened it up, you had these two guns, sort of. Like, with big, thick nozzles on them. And into these, you put a little toy Sonic and a little toy Robotnik that were on a metal point as their base. And you fired them out of the gun, and they came out spinning, because you kind of had to screw them in to the gun. And then you fired them into it, and they came out spinning. So you fired them into the arena, and they spun round, and, you know, one of them would knock over the other one. But the thing is, they were just gorgeous. These little toys were so beautifully made. So beautifully made. They were like these wonderful little miniatures, where what they had to do was they had to, like, make it look like Sonic and Robotnik, but also... It had to conform to a certain shape so that it would fit into the gun and so that... Look at that. And so that it would, um, you know, so it would work. Da-da! And so... What that meant was that, like, Robotnik's lovely little moustache kind of wrapped around his head and he had his little fists up and Sonic's spikes were kind of small and, and dumpy. And this character model... Oh! Always reminded me of that. Something about the physicality of it. Something about, honestly, the fact that he looks like a little plastic toy of Sonic. I loved it. Look, oh, I can't get over it even now. I, lo I love this. I think this is a great sprite. I think it's really good. I just, I just do. Again. There's no irony to it. People make fun of this game. And I just don't see why. It's a good game. It's not, like... It's not... Well, okay, I do know why. It's because this came out immediately after... Sonic and Knuckles. So, like, we'd had Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Not just the pinnacle of the Sonic series, but, like, really one of the pinnacles of 16-bit gaming. Certainly one of the two best 16-bit platformers ever made. The other one being Yoshi's Island, of course. Um, Sonic 3 and Knuckles had just come out, and then this is the next one. In those days, we didn't know that was it. We didn't know there were no more, like, proper Sonic games that were ever going to come out. <laughs> um... So to a lot of people, this was a disappointment. To me, it was just like, okay, now we're trying this. It's exciting, it's 3D. I was well into it. The animations are a bit stiff, I agree. Um, but, you know, for what you get, it's pretty great. Because, first off, there's a stiffness involved in this. Oh, actually, that's interesting. Okay, if I look on my... Um if I look on my OB screen, it's actually really smooth. Whereas if I look on my emulator, sorry, my real Mega Drive, it's actually kind of herky jerky. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna expand my my OB screen and just kind of look at that while I play. Can I do that? Yeah. If I put that over there and then maximize this, I play it on here. Yeah. Because, for some reason, it's much smoother on OBS, I guess, because that's the prioritised. Um, anyway. Okay, so I was worried that you were seeing it even herkelier jerklier than it's supposed to be, because that's what I was seeing. Um, but, you see, bits like that, where once the sprite's moving, it's fairly smooth, you know? It's just that you've only got a certain number of um, points of articulation, like he's got certain directions he can face it, you know?
Oh, is there any delay? No. Looks like it's moving at exactly the same rate, so I might as well look on OBS, and that means I can see you chatting to me right at the side there. If you compare it to, say, Donkey Kong Country or Mario RPG, same pre-rendered CGI models made into sprites, but Rare and Square did a much better job than Traveller's Tales. All right. I'll give you that. Can't go on there. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm distracted by the chat now. Well, you say budget Blayblades there. Uh, no, you didn't. You said budget Beyblades. But this was considerably earlier than Beyblades. Um, this was way pre Beyblade. And so, kind of, it was the other way around. Although I think all of the above were copied from something else again. It was why I didn't like Beyblades. I was annoyed by, Bla by Beyblades. By Beyblade. Apparently I can only call it Blaybades, so I'm going to. I was annoyed by Blaybades because they were just discs. Whereas, in my day, they'd been amazing little figurines of Sonic and Robotic. Oh, get off. You horrible man! Do 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 boo um pop ba da ba da ba do 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 be be do. Uh, Kairo had the Knuckles Happy Meal toy. Yes, I had that. I feel like nobody said plush when I was a kid either. It was always stuffed animal. Yeah, stuffed toy, cuddly toy, the Sonic cuddly toy. You might say the, the Sonic Teddy. Some people would say we used all of these. Oh, I forgot to go to that spring and get me extra life. <clears throat> well, I mean, I imagine Rare and Square were fairly small, or at least rare. But yeah, I get the sense they were bigger than Traveller's Tales. Because Traveller's Tales... I think this was like Traveller's Tales' first game. Maybe they did something else under another name or something, but I feel like this was their kind of first thing. And, and what an achievement, you know? Did they do right, sir? Do, 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 pew! I uh, can't remember now. <laughs> yeah, there's. Uh, I'm sorry if there's not much for you to see here. This is basically for my benefit. I love this, and it just makes me feel really nice in October. And I always just like to, you know, do it. They did. They definitely made Toy Story. Oh, oh! It's so weird acknowledging Toy Story came out in '96. Well, I've got news for you because it came out in '95. Um, oh! Yeah, I know what you mean though. It's it's because it was, it's because Toy Story 2 came out in 1990. <clears throat> yeah, um... Do you know what, actually? No, 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 actually... Perhaps it did come out in 96. Yeah, forget that. It came out in 96. Did it? One of them. That's interesting. I wonder why I've... For some reason, I've always thought Toy Story came out in 95. But now that you bring it up, and now that I think about the evidence... Yeah, I think it did come out in 96, so I don't know why I thought that. Because we went to it for my friend Mike, as aforementioned, 14th birthday, and I think that would have been in 96. I'm sure we were 14 in 96. Because that's when this came out. And I was 14. Yeah, yeah, of course it was 96. What am I about? Dee -dee. What the hell, Kairu? Toy Story was of no interest to you? What kind of monster are you? Do, 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 do. I'm gonna watch Toy Story just to spite you now. <laughs> I've had a bit of a hankering, you know, recently. I've wondered about watching Toy Story again. I... Things may change. I've got to the point where I've been sick of the Toy Story films. 
because I just watched them too many times. Um, and of course, we have the whole John Lasseter situation to contend with now. But what will never change and what can never change is how absolutely epically exciting it was for me when the DVD box set came out. The Ultimate Toy Box, it was called. And that there was no Toy Story 3 in those days. It wasn't even a... It wasn't even a, a, a twinkle on the drawing board. It was... Toy Story 2 had just come out, basically. Like, this was its home video release. And they brought out the Ultimate Toy Box. And it was a DVD box set of Toy Story 1, Toy Story 2, and, like, you know, a ton of extras and stuff. And, and it was a really big deal because the film... Like, you know, to you know, Toy Story 1, no one ever expected it to be out on DVD at all. And in fact, I own it on Blu-ray now, and as I remember... Well, I remember this very clearly. I'm going to tell you the exact thing that I was told. Whether or not it was true is another matter, but I remember it being fairly official information. They, The film itself was rendered originally, you know, obviously it was put to film, but it was originally rendered at less than 1080p just because just whatever they just didn't either they didn't have the tech or they didn't need to or that wasn't the done thing or whatever and um perhaps the perhaps the confusion is that it was 95 american release date and i saw it in 96 because that's when it came out here um i don't know where you live kairu so i don't know what you know whether, whether there's a release delay for you but anyway, because um, there was always a, a year's delay for Disney films uh, here in the UK. Uh, I'm going to Frings for Knuckles. Oh, especially not Al. Um, right. Toy Story, yes. They, it, was, it was rendered at under 1080p. So when they did the Blu-ray, they were like, well, we've got to do a Blu-ray of Toy Story. But we can't because it'll be rendered at less than 1080p. And so, and this is the way I heard it. This is what might be wrong, but this is definitely what what, uh, what was told to us at the time. Was that they went, okay, alright, fair cop. And they dug out the actual files, and they just rendered the film again. For the Blu-ray. And to make it, like, to justify it, they, um, they, they uh, stuck a second camera in there, rendered it in 3D, released it in 3D in the cinemas. So as, I think, as I understand it, the 3D version of Toy Story that exists is true 3D. It's like actually rendered in 3D. Um, who knows? Maybe that was just a bit of spin. Am I supposed to go here or not? No. Okay, no. That's right, Kairu. Yeah, they had they had all the film for Star Trek TNG, but the uh, but the special effects were done at very low resolution, very very low resolution, and straight to video. So they just went, oh, let's just try and recreate it. And you can't tell. Like I'm, we're watching through the remastered TNG now, and like there's no special effects that don't that that sort of stand out as not fitting the the style. Do, do, do. Oh, I lost my flickies. Whoever lost them. Oh, I tell you what, that's something that's in the special edition that he's done, the director's cut. You get a little arrow telling you what direction your flickies are in. Oh, you used to watch it over and over again, did you, and sort of learn the special effects? Because, I mean, obviously, like, the look of the old ones are nostalgic to me, but I don't remember the specifics. <coughs> I mean, the, the look of the... the of Star Trek TNG pre-remaster is nostalgic to me just by itself. You know, that that kind of pinkish blurry effect is that like when I see comparison pictures I'm kind of like, well I prefer it the old way. <laughs> but uh, obviously it's best to watch it remastered. So we are. Also that's the one that's on Netflix. Okay, he can stay there for now. Go, go back for him in a bit. Where's the rest of my flickies? Evening, Marinthew. I'm afraid you missed a very good game. But there's going to be a bit more. I don't know how you expect to get them back. I, uh, I had an idea then, but it's not going to work. I was going to go and see Knuckles. But of course, I need more rings than I've got. Oh, here they are. Here they are. 
Come on, lads. That is a fair few flickies, you're right. Just chiming through my follows before I fall asleep. Stay amazing. Sleep well if you do tonight. Oh, thank you. Do, 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 do. Come here. Any any springs and things and do roll and clue? No. I have finished the level. Bum ba ba da. Where were we? What were we talking about? I feel like we were. Oh, Toy Story. Lovely box set that was. Ever so nice. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so now obviously I've got those upscaled Blu-rays and, uh, well, no, upscale is wrong because that implies that it was done incorrectly. Whereas, apparently, it literally really was re-rendered. Um, Toy Story 1, anyway. I'm sure Toy Story 2 probably was already. Because Toy Story 2, um, yes, that will have been done in 1080p because... Oh, I see. Tarzan? Oh, I see. Because... Uh, it was released digitally, uh, in, originally, when it first came out. It was it was shown on digital screens. Not everywhere, not where I saw it, but on um, the Leicester Square, Odeon had a digital screen. What they'd done play it on. Ah, this is hard. I've got to bounce off those little snowmen's. And i got to bounce into Robotnik. Ah, Robotnik! I'm your enemy! This is long established! Oh, what? That's not fair. The bloke uh, who made this is talking about... I'm sure I've seen him talk about how... About how, um, you know, there was only a limited colour palette, so he had to make Robotnik's moustache grey. But I just always thought that was like an effect of him being behind the glass. You don't have to bounce off the snowman. Just jump over the ice gun. Oh! I can actually jump high enough. Huh. Well, well. Well, well, well. I thought I had to bounce off of them. Bounce up off them. Bounce up possum. I quite liked it. Good improvement. Playing off how old fashioned. <coughs> yeah, I loved all the Woody's Roundup stuff. I don't think I saw it as like old fashioned and silly. I thought I saw it as like a love letter to that sort of thing, but still, yeah, same difference. Come here, Robotnik. Oh yeah, that's right. They've made his visor smash bit by bit. That's nice. Ah! That's one way of telling it how, how high up you are. I don't know why. Do I have no rings? I thought I was keeping track of my rings. Guess not. Do, 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 do. Oh dear, at this rate, there's going to be a lot of save staging later on. Ah! Oops. I like to save my rings around the outside in this game because. Yeah, because the, <clears throat> the 3D aspect is a bit difficult to judge. Um, you often lose your rings and need more, and they don't give you many, so it's generally a good idea to save them instead of grabbing them all. Oh, point is, the first movie you're meant to... You're not meant to question why he has that kind of toy, but also an equally goofy modern play school Big Hands and Feet electronic space band doll thing. Yeah, sort of, although I got the impression that it was just... One was just like an old family toy that they had. I don't know, it just felt normal to me, because I was kind of... I was sort of... I was a few years older than Andy in Toy Story, but I was of the era that he was of, and um, we did have similar things. We had kind of old toys that were like hand-me-downs, or or just they still made that kind of toy. So, like, I've been, I was thinking the other day, actually, about how, like, modern kids, or my kids, if I have kids, 
they won't get out of Toy Story quite as much as we did because they will not have owned that phone from the third one, the Fisher Price telephone. You know, they won't have had the the ball that was in the first one, the sort of weird ceramic Bo Peep type things. Those are all real things that we had, and um, um, and not anymore. And the and the really weird thing is that like all Mr. Potato Heads that have come out sort of since Toy Story have kind of been Toy Story Mr. Potato Heads. Actually, I don't think that's true. I think they did keep. Uh, oh, whoops, wrong button. I think they did keep selling the the sort of "quote unquote" real Mr. Potato Head. But you get the point. There's a couple of things that uh, like. Would people make a slinky dog now, or would they worry about uh, copyright for the Toy Story? You know, they kind of, they kind of took the whole concept of by using toys that we all recognise from real life. They kind of took ownership of those toys and made them part of the Toy Story franchise. And so that initial surprise of like, oh look, it's my toys. Modern kids probably won't have that um, <clears throat> unless. I always quite like the idea of a kid having a Buzz Lightyear toy and watching the Buzz Lightyear cartoon not knowing about Toy Story. I always thought that would be cool. You know? And then, because then that reveal, that moment of reveal where it's like, to, to original audiences it was like, oh cool, who's this toy? To them it will be like, oh cool, he's got a Buzz Lightyear, you know? Which is just as good for the, for the telling of the story. I don't know, I just find that interesting. That's why I was really pleased that they did make the the cartoon of Buzz Lightyear that I imagined Andy was into. Um, kind of spoiled it by having a Toy Story intro to the first episode, but apparently that was only on the, the video stroke DVD. In the, actual, in the actual first episode, it was just an episode, I think. What have we got here? Hello! I've only got 26 rings. You, you won't accept 26 rings, will you? No. Have I banked them now with knuckles, or are they just gone? Wobbum. Wobbum. <clears throat> yeah, this music, man. Doo, 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 doo. Just reading the chat. Modern toys are a lot more like Buzz Lightyear than like the action figures I have as a kid, which are closer to modern collectibles in style. Maybe Small Soldiers is more like Buzz Lightyear, right? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I dismissed that one and still haven't seen it. What was you, Compound? I banked them, lovely. Oh, it's on it. Oh, that was alright in the end. Oh! I've already been there, have I? That bit is so songy, isn't it? No, 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 no. I always sort of. I always heard that in the voice of the guy from, um. Suede. I don't know if it's because the... Well, it was, he had a song in the charts at the time, but I don't know if it was because that sound sounds like him, or maybe the song he had in the charts at the time went like that or something, I don't know. Has my Flicky gone over the lava? Has my Flicky gone over the sea? <laughs> ah! Bring back... Where are you guys? Yeah, you know what I mean? By the way, the guy from Suede... Who? Oh, it's, not, it's not like I know much about the guy from Suede. Like, I must have seen him on Top of the Pops once or twice when Trash was out. That's it. Um, but he was how I imagined Snape when I was reading the book. Um, I don't know, because he was a bit sort of goth and slimy looking. And, um, you know, before there was a film. You already know the story about how I saw, um, oh, what's his name, the guy who plays Snape? Well, alright. What was his name? Alan Rickman. You know the story, I'm sure, of how I saw Alan Rickman in um, the Barchester Chronicles playing a man called Mr. Slope. 
in which he was this extremely slimy character. And I saw this, having read the first, I don't know, two or three Harry Potter books, but the film wasn't out yet, however many Harry Potter books were out. And I was like, oh, this guy, this guy is Snape. He should play Snape. And so then, like, a week later, they announced that they had cast him as Snape, and I was just, yes! <laughs> yes! Hey, 51. Doesn't even matter whether Knuckles has still got my rings from before I died or not. <clears throat> oh, very useful, thank you. Hey, Knuckles! I like ya. So I'm just gonna put this on ya. Hey do 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 but do 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 but do 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 that time I did deliberately hit a bomb because I thought I was invincible from previously hitting a bomb. What a silly billy I am to make a something like that. Biddly beep ba be doo ba 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 fibbly ba dobbly be doo da 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 biddly beep be be doo 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 biddly be doo 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 Oh, I might be out of sync again. Do 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 do. It's the Grey Emerald, the elusive and mysterious Grey Chaos Emerald. One emerald to control them all. I'm not going to rest, says Matt, until I find out why Starlight Express is October. Well, well, Matt, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. It's because um, in, I think, April of 1995, am I... And I wasn't going to tell you this, I was saving this information until later, Matt, because as you know, you and I are thinking of doing a sort of podcast about this, and I had you listen to Starlight Express, and that, the one you listened to, is the CD that my brother got in preparation for going to see it with school in the summer of 1995. And if you want to know exactly when, and why would you, it was the exact week that they released The Lion King on video in the UK uh, and I had to wait all week with the video in hand for Andy, my brother, to get home because I didn't want to watch it without him. That's some good brothering now, think back about it. Anyway, <clears throat> I mean look, I caved and watched The Circle of Life, but that was as far as I got. Stop then. Anyway, he was watching Starlight Express, so it's fine. No, I'll tell you, Matt, I'll tell you, but you have to... If you haven't already, which you may already have done, don't do this, okay? Because I'm saving it, I'm doing a bit of timing. Why have I got one fire-looking red bird and one normal-looking red bird? Oh, is that like a... That's a pink bird. That's a different breed of bird. Damn it! Okay, so you've heard Starlight Express, right? And I'm talking to Matt now. That's a few fire flickies. Oops. And one day we just there was something that that was that interested us. Um, we were just I don't know we we were we were just in Leicester one day. Our local town of Leicester. And that day was probably in October or thereabouts. Maybe it was the same day I bought Sonic 3D because I was in Leicester for that. And, um... <clears throat> and we were in uh, HMV or Virgin Megastore, one of them. We Virgin Megastore. And we were just looking through CDs and we were looking in the, the films and shows section because... What you do is you, you look up something that you know and you see if the CD is it there, of it is there. I looked up, I looked for the CD of Return to the Forbidden Planet. A CD that I owned. 
And there it was. You know, that was that was the exercise. It really was just like it's a thing I recognise here. And just on a whim, we looked in the tapes section as well, and we saw something that confused us greatly. It was a double tape purporting to be of Starlight Express. Something that we were fully, fully um, familiar with, because we'd listened to that CD inside and out. Andy had now gone and seen the show. I hadn't, but like, he told me all about it. I knew, we, we were fans of this show, right? And we find this double tape, and it's all wrong. It doesn't have the cool, like, trainee logo on the front. It has this, it's just black, and it has this, this weird, um, blurred photo of what might be the cast of Starlight Express, but it's difficult to tell because they're so blurred. Like, deliberately, like, it's, it's done with a long exposure lens to kind of make them look like they're going really fast, I suppose. And it was like, and it just said Starlight Express, and we realised something in that moment. We realised that our CD that we had, and the one that Matt, I had you listen to, that one said, the new Starlight Express. And we realised in that moment, is this the old Starlight Express? Because we assumed, right, that it meant the new show called Starlight Express. But what if... Was this... Were, what, were we seeing a knockoff? One of those things where it's like, you know, the musical players perform musical. Or was this actually legit the original version of Starlight Express? So... We bought it. And it was. It was the original Starlight Express. And this is what I'm saving, or I was saving, Matt, for you to hear. Um, that's a good example, Karu, yeah. For you, Matt, to hear before, short, fairly shortly before we do our podcast. Or, now, if we get a move on and decide to do our podcast soon, you know. Because the, the old Starlight Express recording... It's longer, it's got many, many more songs in it, the story makes more sense. Overall, it suddenly contextually kind of makes sense. Whereas, you know, the, the new Starlight Express, although I still think it's a better introduction to the show for people now, um, it's a bit like what's going on here and you just have to kind of up with that and, and you know just decide to enjoy the songs or not and once you start looking into that oh yeah then you find out thanks Siege that there's all sorts of weirdness going on with Starlight Express with how its story changed with how its tone changed the point of it the purpose of it it's a very interesting musical, and Matt, if you're still there, when we do our podcast about it, I will load you up with everything you need, don't you worry about that. There'll be videos, there'll be recordings, there'll be behind-the-scenes footage, there'll be all sorts of stuff. And I guess that was October, and I must have just... And, and we were so obsessed with this tape, because the thing is, Starlight Express, the Starlight Express we knew was this super ultra modern I mean now it sounds really kitchen 90s but at the time super modern like is it how can a musical sound like this pop album and um, <clears throat> whereas the old starlight it sounded like uh, okay Matt says in new Starlight, I was like I'm, I'm listening to songs from a musical with loads of non-song script but I've seen the musical on video. It gives utterly no context. You've seen the musical on video. That's interesting. Um, yeah, no, there's no... There is no script in Starlight Express at all. It's all sung through. But I agree, yeah. Um, the old... Oh, the old Starlight album. The original Starlight album. It sounds haunted. The fact that... That... That black cover... With, and also, like, if you looked, you got a booklet with it, and there were all these really blurry photos. 
Um, and so that kind of made it feel a bit weird and haunted. And then when you hear the music, it's honestly like ghosts. It's so weird. And we listened to it in the car on the way back from town that day, just like driving through the, you know, the, the dark and the, the street lights. And it just was perfect. It was such a cool day. Um, so yeah, so I love listening to Star old Starlight during the October, and I, I haven't haven't done it this year, nor have I played this. Now, as it goes, I actually don't know if that was October. It could have been September. You know, it could have been. I always just kind of took it to be October when I when I think back on it because it's just like when the winter chill starts, you know. So I'll probably bang it on next time I get a chance. However, I've just remembered I've got a very full day tomorrow. Um, we have people over on in the afternoon, so we're going to have to spend the morning tidying up. And yet, also, we are uh, trying to spend it out at our cafe, doing some work. I'll be doing some writing, I'll be doing some, doing some drawing, and seeing some dogs. Abby's now friends with a lot of dogs who live there, and so we'll be doing that. So, it's time I said goodnight. Good night, everybody. Uh, Jenny already hates me because I sang Freight is Great for two weeks straight. Brilliant. I'm really in favour of that. <laughs> I miss albums on video. Oh, I never had any of those. Unless you count the Dangerous, the Michael Jackson Dangerous video. But it wasn't like the album. It was just like, I guess he made these ones as videos. So here they are. I know, right, Matt? Let's do it. Let's team up soon. The only reason, the only thing stopping us, and this is the same as another podcast I'm, I'm a, imminently about to start with Chris McFeely of Transformers The Basics fame, and if you don't know that, go and have a look at Transformers The Basics, um, is that we can't think of a good enough name for the podcast. You know, we're trying to come up with like a punny name. Can't do it. Um, for me and Matt's uh, musicals podcast, I, I keep going back to the name All These Things You Saw In Your Pajamas, just because it sounds like, you know, just all these things you saw sounds about right. But then In Your Pajamas, suddenly, no, that doesn't make sense anymore. That would be good for like a Saturday morning cartoons uh, podcast, but uh, I don't think there's been a uh, Technical The Dream Goat animated <laughs> series. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're going to call it. Well, maybe. We kind of want... Oh, different stages! Oh, yeah! There you go! Huh. Well, there we go. Sorted. <laughs> well, hey, life's a stage. Make it a spin-off. <laughs> but, yeah, no, different stages. There we go. Because the um, the the concept of it is going to be, like, different versions of the same musical. Anyway. Oh, I, actually, Matt, I did think of a name, uh, which isn't a pun, uh, which is called uh, Don't Bother With The Film. <laughs> But yeah, I think different stages is our one. We can start that soon. Alright, well. Yeah, they do. It's not great, yeah. It's like he's... Well, it's like he's cupping the sides of his belly. Yeah, you know, I'd love to call it Don't Watch the Film. Because that is a thing that we all say, but um, it'll sound like a bad films podcast, and that's not what it is. But bye, flipping bye. Good night. Thanks for being with us. More Undertale another day. Don't know what day. Tell you in advance. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>